Hi, I'm Steve from the Oasis site and today we're looking at Proverbs 18 verse 21 which says this, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruits. We've all been on the, the end of words that have been negatively uh, expressed to us, that have shaped us or impacted us in, in some way, especially if those words have come from authority figures in our lives, like parents, teachers, employers, even uh, church leaders. And if that is you, you've never spoken to a, 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 a trusted Christian friend, do do, do that, or alternatively, get into the, the, the prayer room uh, after one of our live stream services. We'd love to begin to talk and and pray that through with you. But um, likewise, I hope we've all experienced words being said that have positively impacted us and shaped us. Thanks, encouragements, prophecies, uh, maybe people pointing us to, to Jesus for the first time, things that have uh, confirmed us and strengthened us in areas of uh, gifting. And so all of this negative, and positive comes from this little bit of muscle in our mouths, our tongues. And I do encourage you, if you want to explore this topic further, then uh, have a look at the book of James in the New Testament, especially chapters uh, one and three. Uh, he says some very wise things. He says, be quick to hear and slow to speak. He says some profound things. He says that our tongue is like a, a rudder of a massive ship. It's small, but it has a very big effect. He says some shocking things. Uh, he says that if you claim to be a Christian, but don't control your tongue, your profession of faith is worthless. He also says some strong things. He says, if you never slip up in this area, then you're perfect. But let's get back to this particular proverb, death and life are in the power of the tongue. There's no way of asking this nicely, but is your tongue a death bringer at times? I ask myself that question too. I know at times it is, and yet it's a horrific thought. Our tongues are like a, sh a super sharp knife, and even slight misuse of them can cause injury, pain, or loss. Changing the, the imagery, last year we, we saw some terrible images on our TV screens of powerful, uncontrolled Australian bushfires. Those fires started with a spark. That's all it took. And, and James says to believers that our tongues can be a, a flame set on fire by hell. That is very strong language. And that is how seriously God regards lying, gossip, slander, angry words, crude humour, grumbling and cursing. All these areas of, of speech are outlined and, and highlighted uh, in, uh, in, in the Bible. He, he sees them as serious and uh, and one spark from our mouths in those areas can, is capable of starting destructive forest fires. The proverb also makes it clear that when we tend to start fires with our tongues, sooner or later we get burnt ourselves. But it doesn't have to be this way. Your tongue can also be a wonderful life bringer, like a cool, pure, fresh, crystal clear mountain stream on a hot summer's day. And the Bible is rich in ways that we can be that through thanking, building up, encouraging, giving grace, greeting, comforting, and praying to name but a few. Does this mean that we've just got to be sweet, warm, and cuddly all the time in our speech? Uh, well, well, no. Our, at times our speech does need to be robust. There are other biblical references to speaking the truth, reproving, uh, rebuking, admonishing, spurring one another on, 
and confessing our sins to each other. Uh, but all these uses of the tongue do need to be motivated by the desire to build up rather than getting one up. And they need to be said in love. This means taking great care, not just with the content of what we say, but our voice tone and our body language too. And again, as this kind of river pours out of us towards others, we get blessed too. That's what this proverb is saying. Well, this is a hugely challenging area for all of us. Is there any hope for us? Well, yes, there is. Jesus, as the perfect man, modeled beautifully uh, a, a life-giving tongue all the time, whether he was blessing children, whether he was speaking to a woman caught in, in adultery, whether he was cleansing the temple or, or turning uh, the hairdryer on uh, the religious leaders of the day. The reality is, and James makes this very clear, we will fail often. But as we keep coming back to Jesus, asking for his forgiveness and asking him to fill us again with the Holy Spirit, slowly but surely, we will become more and more like him in this area. Let's, let's pray together. Let's come to God. Father, I do, I do pray, especially for any, for, uh, for those that have had words that have negatively shaped and impacted them big time. Uh, and I'm praying that even now, Lord Jesus, that uh, you will set them free, that you will bring release from those words. I thank you, your power is greater and can do that. And Lord, we come to you and we, we ask for forgiveness, Lord. We, we ask for those sparks that have set uh, uh, forests uh, on fire. We, we ask for forgiveness for those times where we've used that, that super sharp knife of our tongue in a way that's cut in and damaged others. Please forgive us, Lord God, and please fill us with your Holy Spirit, so that today and every day, uh, the speech that pours from our mouths will be like that beautiful, life-giving stream. And we ask this in your wonderful name, Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Have a good day.